Hello and welcome back to FinCree. Most of us have watched movies at one point or another. If you're a lover of movies like myself, then you sometimes want to see how well your favorite movies have fared at the box office. It's purely for educational purposes, but this is a finance-based channel, so we will also try to understand the economics of the entertainment industry. What this video would not be is any kind of review on any of the movies, and we will specifically focus on feature films. So let's get into it. America produces thousands of movies every year, and is the largest producer in terms of movies per year in the world. It accounted for 63% of the total world box office share in 2021, but most of it came from foreign markets. This is obviously helped by some big budget movies that are released to a wider audience. If you look at the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time, you will see familiar production houses based in US behind those movies. But almost all of those movies earn majority of their revenue through foreign markets. As per IMDB, the highest grossing movie is listed as Avatar, of which about 73% of the box office revenue came from international markets. Not much different for second highest grosser either. Avengers Endgame grossed over 69% from international markets. And the story is almost the same for all top movies. The only two movies among the highest grossing movies that have almost the same share for domestic and foreign market earnings are Spider-Man No Way Home and Top Gun Maverick both of which were recently released. And the one common characteristic that both these movies shared was that they were not released in China. Yes, China happens to be the second biggest market for Hollywood movies. So it is imperative for the production houses to have a significant presence in China, as that helps them boost the box office revenues. So movies like Spider-Man and Top Gun, which were able to make their place among the highest grosses despite no access to the Chinese market, is a testament itself for the success of those movies. Now if you noticed, all of the top 10 movies were produced by some familiar production houses. In fact, over 80% of the market share is held by only 5 companies. Those are Walt Disney Studios, Sony Entertainment, Universal Studios, Warner Brothers and United Artists. This is as per 2021 data. The other top companies are Paramount and Lionsgate. In 2019, Disney bought 20th Century Fox, so that also added to Disney's market share. What is interesting is when we look at the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time, 8 of the 10 movies are either remakes, reboots or an extension of established characters. In fact, not just the top 10, you can look at the top 20, you will find the same pattern. This obviously shows a particular trend, but let's come back to that later. It goes without saying that entertainment is an important part of the economy. For America, the film industry contributed about $500 billion to goods and services portion of the GDP pre-pandemic, which would account for about 3% of the GDP. It employs nearly 2.2 million people across the country and pays around $192 billion in yearly wages. It consists of around 110,000 businesses, 89% of which are small businesses, employing less than 10 people. So I suppose it's needless to say how important the entertainment industry is for the running economy. This industry took a significant hit after COVID in 2020. If we look at the box office revenues from 1980, we can see a consistent upward trend till about 2002. But then it started to flatten and the highest it went up to was $11.89 billion in 2018. It was in the same range in 2019 and then it took a nosedive in 2020 to over $2 billion only. It did recover in 2021 to about $4.48 billion but it is nowhere near the level that it was in 2019. So the question is, is this a dying industry? Let's try to understand. I said earlier that we would come back to the issue of most top grossing movies being remakes, reboots or extensions of established characters. Well, let's. Take a look at the highest grossing movie for every year. From 2010 to 2021, you will see no movie that had an original screenplay except The 800 in 2020, which is a Chinese movie. If you go beyond that, from 2000 to 2009, you will see one movie with an original screenplay, which was Avatar. Now, take a look at the highest grossing movies from 1990 to 1999. You can see eight original screenplays. So we are looking at a trend, aren't we? But this is only for the highest grossing movies. There are a lot of movies that are made every year. If we look at the data, from 1995, we can see a downward trend. From 95 to 2000, the lowest market share for original screenplays was around 49% and the highest at around 60%. From 2000 to 
From 2001 to 2005, the lowest was around 38% and the highest was around 54%. From 2006 to 2010, the lowest was around 41% and the highest was around 50%. From 2011 to 2015, the lowest was around 35% and the highest was around 45%. From 2016 to 2021, the lowest was around 33% and the highest was around 57%, which looks to be a one-off as it was from year 2020 when the base revenue was much lower and not many movies released. It went back to 36% in 2021, so it is definitely a trend. Both the lowest as well as the highest share of original screenplays have shown a downward trend every five years. It is worth mentioning that movies categorized in the genre adventure have had the highest market share since 2000, except in the last few years when action genre was able to beat that few times. Based on an internet survey, it was found that people who enjoyed superhero movies but were getting tired of the abundance of them rose from 17% to 23% from April 2018 to November 2021. This obviously is telling because those movies have been among the highest grosses for the production houses mentioned earlier in the last two decades. So the trends do suggest that watching feature films in the theaters may not be as popular as it used to be and that may be because of multiple reasons. Even though after 2020, when COVID hit, the revenue took a significant downturn. It was replaced by OTT platforms like Netflix, Prime, Hulu, etc. But irrespective of that, we saw a certain drop in the growth rate in revenues from 2000 to 2019, which was well before COVID. People have talked about lack of creativity, and certainly there is some evidence to suggest that based on the stats as we saw. So the question remains, is this a dying industry, and will it be replaced completely by Netflix, Prime and Hulu. The way I see it, it is a case of demand and supply. When Covid hit, it raised the demand for an alternate source of entertainment, which was fulfilled by these platforms. Now we may have an abundance of that too, which does not seem as sustainable. The reason I say that because an individual has to subscribe monthly to all these platforms individually, and that may be financially burdensome to a lot of people. You never know, we may see Disney buying a lot of those platforms or multiple companies coming together and selling those platforms in a bundle as we saw with Disney, Hulu and ESPN. So it may be an alternative, but not to feature films on big screen. It seems to be more of an alternative to cable TV. Similar is the case with lack of creativity. Injecting beloved comic book or famous novel characters into movies was loved by people, therefore created the demand which was fulfilled by these companies. Now that we're witnessing this idea getting stale, those same companies will have to change paths to provide more original screenplays. Or they lose. Let's see how this decade turns out to be. That's it for today guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and share the video and please do subscribe. See you next time.